I built not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not even six, but seven SMMAs in a row just to prove to you that it is not luck. In this video, instead of telling some fancy story, I'm actually going to break down the exact four step process that I use to take a brand new agency from 20K a month to over 150K a month in just 90 days. And for those who are wondering how much is profit though, this agency does over 100K a month, every single month in pure profit. So if you're not making at least 100K a month in SMMA right now, I need you to put away the bullshit distractions, please, for this video, because this very well could change your entire life. I'm not holding back. I'm going to give everything in this video. So strap in and let's dive into the exact four step process. Okay. So step one is market selection and offer, AKA picking a niche and figuring out what to sell to that niche. Now this sounds so simple, but so many people get this wrong and it holds them back because if you can pick the right market, you can play this game on easy mode. This whole game becomes easier if you just simply choose the right niche. Mark Andreessen, one of the greatest venture capitalists of all time, wrote a paper, a pretty infamous paper at this point, back in 2010, where he posed the question, what is the most important thing in a startup? And he theorized that there's three main things that VCs and entrepreneurs typically say are the most important things. There's product, there's team, and then there's the market. And most people say products the most important or teams the most important. But Mark made the case that the market is actually the most important thing in a startup. And here's why the market will quite literally pull the product out of the startup because it's so desperate. It has so much need. And there's so many people in this market that need a solution to a problem that it will pull the product out of the startup and the right product will pull the right team to it because great people are attracted to great products. So if you get the right market, you can build the right product and you can create the right team, but it all starts foundationally with what market do you go into? I was listening to a book called Berkshire Hathaway University today. One of the things they talked about in this book was something Warren said where he said, I'd rather have good entrepreneurs in a great market than great entrepreneurs in a good market. That's how important the market is. That being said, here's exactly what I look for when choosing a market and choosing the right niche. Oh, and if you want to know what niche we actually went into, if this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll actually drop the niche. Now, the last video, I built six SMMAs in a row to prove it's not luck. That video has over 20,000 likes, completely skyrocketed my career. You guys are awesome for that. Um, but if this gets just 5,000, I'll actually drop the niche and I'll show you what market we went into. And I might even show you what our new agency, our eighth SMMA, what market that went into as well. That being said, here's the three things I look for. Number one, I'm looking for a big market. The most important thing I look for is the size of the market, the total addressable market or the TAM. This is the total amount of potential customers that are in that market. If you ever see a big business, you can almost always guarantee they're in a big market. So that's the first thing I look for is the size. Usually I want at least a hundred thousand potential customers in that market. If I'm selling B2B services like SMMA or a marketing agency, and that's the minimum I usually want to go with. Now our other niche real estate, which is our sixth agency that has over two and a half million realtors. That's a massive market. So ideally we're on the higher end scale. We're past a million potential customers, but as long as there's a hundred thousand, I'm good with going into that niche. The second thing I look for is growth rate. I want there to be a lot of growth in the market we're going into 10 years ago. There was only about a million realtors in the United States. Now there's over two and a half million. There's so much massive growth annually within that market that had we started in 2010 and we caught the tailwind of that growth our company most likely would have grown with the market. If you can establish a solid foundation and a, a solid brand in a market that has a lot of upward potential, you will grow with the market. Think about SMMA, for example, people like Joel Kaplan, people like Iman Gazi. This market has grown massively and you've seen their coaching businesses grow as well. Same thing with online education in general. That's why Alex Hermosi is going after the online education niche in such a deep way is because it has so much projected growth. So first is how big is the market? Second is what is the growth rate? How much is the market growing? And then the third thing that I look for when choosing a niche is liquidity. 
how liquid are the people within the market? Do they have a lot of money? Can they actually pay for marketing services? This is the downside to the real estate niche. Average realtor makes $33,000 a year. The average realtor is freaking broke. But because it's so big, we're willing to take that risk. So we're looking for big, we're looking for liquid, we're looking for growing. Now I'm okay with settling on just two out of these three, but ideally we're getting three out of three. And the niche we chose has all three of these things. It's a very big market, it's growing incredibly fast, and it's extremely liquid. These people have a lot of money. So if you can find a big niche that is liquid and can afford marketing services and it's growing year after year, the next thing you have to ask yourself is, what do I offer to this market? There's two ways you can go about this. The first way is you can just steal somebody else's offer. As Picasso said, good artist copy, great artists steal. So you can just find one of the top dogs in your niche, steal what they're offering, and then replicate it and slightly innovate or improve it in your own specific offer and just run that to your niche. For example, one of the things we pioneered in our niche was pay per deal. We started offering our clients in our vertical pay per deal, and then every single person in the niche started offering pay per deal. Now, one of those guys actually surpassed us and is actually making like 400K a month in SMMA, and he stole our offer, which is completely fine, and now he's crushing us, right? Because good artists copy, great artists steal. So don't reinvent the wheel, just steal an offer that's already proven in your niche and run with that. The second thing you can do, if you don't wanna be a great artist, like Picasso said, you can find a niche horizontal to your niche, right? Let's say I'm working with realtors. I can go look at mortgage brokers, or if I'm working with Kairos, I can go look at dentists, and I can see what is being offered in that horizontal niche, and who are the top dogs in that niche that are crushing it, what are they offering? And then I can take that offer, and I can replicate it in my new market. So I can basically take a proven offer already that my market has never seen, but has proof of concept because it's in a horizontal market and I can run that up in my new market. So you can either steal vertically from the top dog in your niche or steal horizontally from another big player in another niche. This is exactly what we did with paper deal. We had seen paper deal done in adjacent markets, but not in our specific vertical. So we had the theory that if it worked in these other markets that are similar, it will work in ours. And sure enough, it crushed. So as you guys can tell, this is not your basic 10K a month, stop jerking off video, all right? This is tactical business principles to scale a legitimate company. And this is exactly what we do. So guys, I know this might not be the sexiest thing in the world, but get rid of the quick hitting dopamine and just keep dialing in with me because that's only step one. That's how you choose the right market. That's how you choose the right offer. That being said, let's dive in to step two. So once we find the BLG or the big liquid growing market, we need to build an acquisition machine. You know the vibes. So Joel Kaplan's one of the biggest coaches in the SMMA space. I was recently at his event in Miami, and one of the things he revealed to the people who paid to go to that event is that out of over a hundred seven figure SMMAs that they worked with, 90% of them used paid ads to acquire customers. So they're selling marketing services on Facebook and Instagram, which is what SMMA is. It's social media marketing. But not only are they providing that service, but they're using that service for themselves to scale up their company. So if you can crack paid ads in a big niche, you have the blueprint to scaling a seven figure SMMA. Like, it really is actually that simple. No exaggeration, no BS. You guys know I have no course to sell you on the back end. Crack paid ads in a big niche and you will build a seven figure agency. When I acquired Estate AI, our sixth agency, our starting point was about 15,000 a month in revenue and we were spending about 1,000 a month on ads. The first month we took over, we raised the ad spend to $7,000 in ads and that month we did $50,000 in revenue. Month two, we spent $15,000 in ads and we did $80,000 in revenue. Month three, we spent $30,000 in ads and we did $150,000 in revenue. We cracked paid ads and we simply scaled it up. So paid ads is like freaking HGH. It's like trend. It's like injecting steroids into your SMMA. If you could crack paid ads, you can run it up. The question is, how do you crack paid ads? This is quite literally the million dollar question. So we use both photos and videos for our creative. That is the most important thing in the ad beside the offer. This is something David Ogilvy, the godfather of modern day advertising has talked about. A great offer 
beats a great advertisement. So if you nail the offer, the advertisement will take care of itself. Assuming you have a good offer, you still want to make a great ad. Again, we use both images and videos. Both of them work. Simply take your offer, you take your guarantee, and you call out your niche in an image. You say, hey chiropractor, put a clip art image of a chiropractor doing an adjustment and say 30 new patients guaranteed or something like that. Call out your niche, present your offer, and with good ad copy and a good funnel, that image alone can actually convert and bring people in to book an appointment to talk to you about your marketing services. Now what the best SMMAs use is high quality videos and this is what will separate you from all of the competition. So I told you guys I was going to over deliver. So here's the four step process we use to create killer video ads to attract SMMA clients. Step number one is find a background that is relevant to your need. Trying to attract dental clients, for example, go sit in a patient chair in a dental office and make an ad talking from the dental chair. If you're trying to go after real estate agents, go get in front of a house that's for sale that speaks to your audience, that is relevant to your audience, and that's going to keep them watching. And guys, if you think it's too hard to make that happen, if you're like, oh, how am I going to find a dentist and sit in the chair? How am I going to go find a house for sale? And but just quit. Just, like straight up, bro. Straight up. Just quit. This is not for you. You will save so much inner peace by just not even trying in the first place. Honestly, guys, like winners win, losers lose. I'm going to give you the framework. If it be, if it's like, nah, it's too much work. I don't want to do it. Just don't, bro. Just don't all with all love and all respect. Just don't even do it because here's the thing, guys. The last video I posted, I built six SMMAs in a row to prove it's not luck. That has over 500,000 views. I broke down how I failed five times in a row. Five agencies failed in a row to eventually build a seven-figure agency that still does seven figures to this day, right? I gave the framework. I showed that it's possible, yet out of 500,000 people who watched it, probably 499,990 people just are going to go on to the next video and keep complaining about life and why it doesn't go the way they want it to. You have to take ownership over this shit. You have to go all in. You have to get rid of the excuses and just decide you're going to do whatever it takes. The process is proven. I am no different than you, but you have to execute on this shit. You have to get rid of the excuses and you have to go all in. So my mindset out of the way, but in all seriousness, bro, if that's too hard for you. Like just, just get out, just get out. There's more money to be made for the rest of us. So step number two of your video. Call out the specific audience you're going after in the video itself. For example, if I'm sitting in one of the patient chairs in a dental office and I'm about to record my video ad, I might call out my audience with something like this. Hey, dental practice owners doing at least $250,000 a year that want to scale to a million dollars a year. Want to know the secret? Something like that. I call out my niche and I get micro specific. A big problem you might have with running paid ads for your agency is lead quality. If you want to get rid of lead quality issues, become more specific in your ad copy and in your script in the video to make sure you're only attracting higher quality leads. When we go after real estate agents, we want to go after six figure real estate agents because most agents don't make six figures. So we just put realtors doing $100,000 or more per year. We put that in our ad copy and now we have increased the quality of people who are paying attention to our ad. You can do the same thing in whatever niche you're going after. So I call out the niche. I call out how much money my ideal client is making minimum. And that's actually a tip we got from Alex Hamozi himself. So don't take it from me, take it from him. And that makes the ad hyper relevant to your specific client. Step number three, present the problem that your ideal client is facing. So if we're going after dentists, we might say something like, Mr. Dentist, are you tired of relying on expensive Google ads and inconsistent patient referrals? What if I told you that that is outdated and there's a better system that seven figure dental practices consistently use to scale up new patient flow? Something like that, right? I'm just thinking off the top of the dome, but you get the point. Step number four, present the solution to your ideal client's specific problem. We might say something like, after seeing, I'm reading my script here. Don't judge me, bro. After seeing so many dentists struggle to scale to seven figures, my team and I have finally gone public with our new patient attraction system. Instead of dealing with a ton of BS, low quality leads, we generate high quality nearby patients who are actively seeking dental care. Now, talk is cheap. That's why we actually guarantee 10 new patients in your first 30 days, or we work for free until you get at least 10 new patients. That's step number four. 
Step number five is call to action plus case studies if you have them. One of the most underrated things in advertising is simply telling the person what you want them to do next after reading your advertisement. Just tell them what's the next step. You've got them hooked, they're engaged, make it abundantly obvious what you need them to do next. Mr. Dentist, if you wanna see if your market is available, just tap the learn more button below this video and fill out a quick form and we'll let you know if your market is available for our program. Now we've just told them, click the learn more button. So we've hooked them in by calling them out. Hey, Mr. Dentist, we've built up some pain in their mind of, hey, are you struggling with X, Y, and Z problem? Then we've presented a solution to solve their problem and we've told them what to do next. That is the simple process to absolutely crush a paid advertisement on video for your niche so you can crack paid ads and scale up. We send these leads to a quick funnel where we first get their name, email, and phone number. Before they book an appointment, we want to get their info because we're pounding the phones. Anytime a dentist or a realtor or a whoever is coming in our funnel, we're calling the heck out of them. We don't need them to book an appointment right away. This is, again, another tip we got from Alex Ramosi. It's one of the biggest things he said on our one-on-one -on -one call with him is, yo, just get more leads and call them more. You don't need everybody to book an appointment on the first step of the funnel. After we collect their info, we send them to a calendar booking page that has a quick five minute video just explaining what we do and prepping them for the call. Now, one thing that we do that's massively different than all the other seven figure agencies out there is our sales process. Instead of having people book in an hour long sales call where we try to close them on the spot, we actually have them book in a 15 minute discovery call where we're basically just qualifying them over the phone and making sure they're serious and interested. This is a nugget. So we're sending them to a 15 minute qualification call with a setter, not a closer, an appointment setter, not an actual sales closer. The sales process we're using is this, by the way, we scaled from 20 K a month to 150 K a month using the sales process. But last month we actually did over $200,000 in revenue in this new agency. And that's just after like six months of scaling it up. So this sales process that I'm about to share with you, it just works. This is what all those 10 K freaking sales guru programs teach on YouTube. It's just spin selling, bro. It's that's all it is. Just buy the book spin selling by Neil Rackham. Thank me later. Save the 10,000. It's the best sales process out there. Now I'm making a sales training right now that I'll probably post in a couple weeks. So if you're not subscribed already subscribe, but the best sales tip I can give you is sales is not about what you say. It's not about how you say it. It's about what you get the prospect to say to you. The more information you can get from the prospect, the more clarity you can get from their own mouth on what they're struggling with and what they want from their business, what solution that they dream about when they, when they go to bed at night. If you can get them to say that rather than you say it to them, you will be able to anchor that in the conversation on the back end when you actually pitch your product. It's not about what you say. It's not about how you say it. It's about what you get them to say to you. Most salespeople are not bad salespeople. They're bad listeners. If you can get better at listening to your prospects, you will become better at closing and selling your prospects. All right, we're putting a whole course out on, on the tubes right now. We got how to find the right market, how to create the right offer, how to build the right acquisition machine with paid ads, an intro and uh, over-level view of our sales process. Now we move on to step three. You're acquiring clients, you've cracked paid ads. How do you make sure that you can manage and scale this agency to seven figures and things don't explode. Step number three is something my friend Eddie Malouf, a $20 million a year SMMA owner calls building the mill. When we are building agencies, we're not building a boutique agency that charges 10K a month retainers and does a different service delivery for every client. I wanna go after a niche where I can copy and paste a proven system for as many potential clients as possible. Those agencies are so easy and so simple to run because there's so little complexity. In our new agency, we were getting way more clients than we could handle and things were getting kind of confusing. So here's what we did. We came up with one offer that every client could use so we didn't have to change and customize the offer every time we got a new client. We came up with three creatives that every client could use that maybe we had to customize a little bit to their specific area, but ultimately was the exact same creative. And then we built an ad copy that we could just copy and paste for every single client. So our fulfillment, our delivery time, it takes us like 30 minutes to set up some Facebook ads because it's all the same process. And then we just click the button, publish the ads and watch the leads come in. This is very important. If you want to scale the agency to 100K a month and beyond, 
you cannot customize your service delivery to every new client you get. You have to keep it as copy and paste and scalable as possible. All three of my SMMAs right now are copy and paste mill style agencies and it just works so well. It's so simple. Don't reinvent the wheel, spin the mill. And yes, you can still get client results with this system. One of our clients just closed an $11 million deal from a copy and paste Facebook ad, bro. A copy and paste freaking Steve Jobs list Facebook ad, dude. $11 million deal just from a copy and paste mill style Facebook ad. So yes, this can still get results, but you need your template to actually be effective. If you want to build a more effective template, or if you're wondering, how do I figure out what kind of ads to run? All you have to do is go to Facebook ads library, look up your niche and just steal what's already proven to work. The other thing you can do, go to Google or go to Facebook groups that have a lot of agency owners in them. Find the biggest agency in your niche. Try to find their website. Go try to find some of their case studies, which they always will promote on their website because they love showing off their testimonials. Go find the name of the client that's in the testimonial. Then go try to find that client on Facebook. Try to find their business page. And then you can actually go to their exact Facebook ads library and you can see what ads they're running for that client. I remember when I was in the gym niche, I was cold DMing on Facebook, these gym owners trying to sell them my uh, my $1,200 a month Facebook ad package. And I remember DMing one client and I was like, hey, like, can I do a two week free trial? And the guy was like, dude, we get like 70 new members a month from Facebook ads from our agency. We don't need your freaking free trial. I was like, 70 new members a month. What the heck are you doing? So what I did is I went to their Facebook page. I looked up their Facebook ads library. I saw the exact ads they were running and then I just stole them and I customized them and I made them my own. And then I ran them for my clients. Good artist copy, great artist steal. The most successful agencies are just stealing what is already proven. They're not reinventing the wheel. You should do that for your service delivery as well. So find a successful client or agency in your niche, go to their Facebook ads library, see what they're running exactly that's getting them the results that they're broadcasting and promoting, and then just customize that in your own way and use that as your service delivery for clients. Nugget. So after we have the system down, we need somebody to man the system. I recommend using upwork.com, onlinejobs.ph, or usefava.com to recruit and find media buyers to start managing this copy and paste system for your clients. Usefava.com is probably my go-to. It costs like 2K or something to find a media buyer. Not a bad price. We've probably hired seven VAs from them at this point, and they crush it. Um, no, I'm not affiliated, although Omir, run me my link, bro. <laughs> Uh, but they do a good job. Onlinejobs.ph is another great place to find good VAs. Upwork.com is good, as well as Facebook groups. There's a lot of good people in Facebook groups. So now that we have the system and the person to manage the system, we're good as far as the basic service delivery goes. The question is, what's next? Where do we go from here? And this is the hard part. Step number four to scaling an agency to 100K a month and beyond is recruiting. This is the central skill of building a great company. The best agencies have the best team members. If you want to build a good company, build a good team. If you want to build a great company, build a great team. This is the name of the game. How good can you get at building people around you? A lot of entrepreneurs want to do it all themselves. They think they need to have all the skills in the agency. They think they need to be the best person in the business. That is such flawed thinking. You have to figure out how do I get people who are more talented than me in each area of the business? And how do I figure out how to make my company attractive to surround myself with somebody who is better at sales than I am, better at customer management than I am, better at media buying and Facebook ads than I am? That should be your goal as an entrepreneur at this level. How do I find people that are better than I am? So step number four, the hard part, recruiting. Recruiting is the central skill that you should have as an agency owner if you want to build an actually great company. Most people who scale to 100K a month, 150K a month, their agencies crash down like three months later and they don't actually sustain. That's an important word that does not get used enough. They do not actually sustain the revenue that they've created. And the number one reason is because they don't build good teams. They build average ass groups of people. All a company is, by definition, is a group of people. So the better group of people you build, the better company you build. That's the most important thing I can try to 
emphasize to you if you're getting to this stage. You should not be thinking, how do I get better at everything in the business? How do I become better at sales and customer management and operations? You should be asking yourself, how do I find somebody who is better than me at sales, better than me at customer management, better than me at media buying, better than me at every area of the business? How do I find people and get a group of people around me that make me feel dumb? Brian Chesky, the CEO of Airbnb, he said this in an interview once and it always has stuck with me. He said, your team should be so good that they almost intimidate you because that's how smart they are. That's how you need to think about building your team. How do I find people that are so much smarter than me? It's almost intimidating. That's how you know you've built a good team. So the first question we have to answer is where do we even find these people in the first place? My favorite platforms are LinkedIn, Indeed, Use Fava, as I mentioned, onlinejobs.ph for VAs uh, and assistants. Upwork is decent, but mainly it's going to be Indeed, LinkedIn for those higher quality people, or I'm just going to go actually pay a recruiter and just give them my money and let them find the person for me. I'm a big fan of recruiters. We've used them at every agency we've built. It's a great investment. Usually you're going to pay three to $5,000 at least though to place a sales rep or to place a CSM or to place one of these uh, onshore American based workers, it's going to be three to $5,000 to place somebody usually at least finding people is one thing. The more important question is what do I look for in my potential team members? I read every single one of Jeff Bezos's letters to shareholders just to, to find the answer to this question. And it did not disappoint before Jeff Bezos hires somebody. He always asks himself these three questions. Question number one, do I admire this person? And that's such a powerful question. Do I actually admire and look up to this person in some capacity? This will let you know whether or not you're settling is do I admire this person? Yes or no. If you don't admire them, you're settling and you shouldn't hire them. Question number two, how likely is it that this person becomes a superstar? The truth is to some extent, you're always hiring for potential, especially at this stage in the agency. You probably can't pay them a ton. You probably don't offer a lot of benefits. You don't have a lot of leverage as an employer. So it's going to be hard for you to recruit people who have already proven to be rock stars. But what you can do is you can find people who have potential to become rock stars. And this is why Jeff Bezos's second question is, what is the likelihood that this person I'm about to hire will become a superstar at the company? He's always thinking in the back of his mind, how likely is it that this person becomes a superstar? You want somebody who you feel confident has at least some superstar potential. The number one thing I'm looking for here is somebody who is really passionate about solving a specific problem. And it might sound cliche, but my best hires have been people who are really hungry and just dedicated to get really great and master a certain craft. Bezos looks for missionaries over mercenaries. And I think that's something really important that I learned the hard way. We want to look for people who actually care about the mission, who actually care about what they're doing every day. They don't just want to make a ton of money. Those people will burn you out and they'll burn out your entire company. So look for missionaries instead of mercenaries and find someone who's hungry. Because if somebody is hungry enough, they will always find a way to get fed. So you want to find somebody who's really passionate and hungry about solving a specific problem in the business. Question number three, my favorite question, the most valuable hiring advice I have ever been given. Will this person make the collective productivity of the group they're going into higher or lower? Will they make the team better or worse, slightly better or slightly worse? This is how we think about hiring at our company. I remember getting this tip from Sam Ovens, who also read all of Jeff Bezos's letters to shareholders. And he asked himself before he brings somebody in, is this person better or worse than the last person we hired in the same department? And this is exactly how I think about hiring at our agencies. At this point, we have over about 45 team members, I think. And every time we hire somebody, I have to ask, are they better or worse than the last person we hired? Is this sales rep? better or worse than the last sales rep we hired? Is this media buyer better or worse than the last media buyer we hired? If you can always answer they're better every time you make a hire, you're creating what's called anti-entropy within your company. Entropy is the second law of thermodynamics. The law states that for every unit you add onto a closed system, the more complexity that that closed system incurs. For example, in my office right now, it's just me. 
it's not very complex. But if you added 20 other people in this room, there would be a whole lot more complexity within this closed system because you're adding more units to a confined closed system. A company is the same way. The more people you bring on to a company, the more complexity that company incurs. So if you want to avoid entropy or complexity, you have to make sure that every unit you add to the closed system is better than the previous unit and will make the other units better as well. That's how you can create what's called anti-entropy within your organization. And this is such an important tip. This is so powerful to bring it back to David Ogilvy, the greatest ad man, the greatest agency owner of all time, in my opinion. When David promoted somebody to executive at his company, he would send them these Russian babushka dolls. And you might be familiar with what those are, but he would send this to the newly promoted executive. And if the executive was curious enough to open the babushka dolls, and if he opened them all the way to the final babushka doll, the little small one, he would find inside a handwritten note by David Ogilvy himself. And the note would read this to the newly promoted executives. If each of us hires people who are smaller than we are, we shall have a company full of dwarves. But if each of us hires people who are bigger than we are, we shall have a company full of giants. You can do that above everything else we have talked about in this video. If you can do that, you will build a company full of giants and the company will likely become a giant in itself. Guys, I hope you got some value out of this. I had a lot of fun making this. I love talking about this shit. Um, I appreciate you. You know, the six SMMAs video that I posted at this point, eight months ago, uh, maybe nine months ago, that video completely skyrocketed my career. I posted that video when I had a thousand subscribers and now we're at, I think 27,000 at this point of posting this video. Just nine months later, I've been able to go on some of the bigger podcasts in the space. Brett Malinowski, Joel Kaplan, gotten to collab with people like Thomas Gannett, go speak at Joel Kaplan's event. It's just been so cool, man. It's been so cool. And I've loved responding to your guys' comments, talking to you in the Instagram DMs, and just building this YouTube channel. To be honest, I have not taken it very seriously until this video. <laughs> I scripted this entire video out. I set up my lights, I set up the background. I'm trying to go full YouTuber because I actually want to bring you guys the most valuable SMMA content in the entire space. So if you got some value out of this, uh, like, you know, that, that, douchey, uh, that douchey request I'm required to make because I'm now officially a YouTuber, like the video, comment on the video, subscribe. And um, in all seriousness, I appreciate you guys for watching. I appreciate all the love over these last nine months. We're just getting started, man. And... Uh, we're just getting started. So I hope you got some value out of this. And if you guys want to talk more, check out my Instagram below. You can DM me. I respond to every DM. I respond to every comment. My goal is to do that up until 100,000 subscribers. Every comment will get a response. Every DM will get an answer. So if you guys have questions, hit me up. And uh, again, send this to somebody who you want to see rich, not broke. As always, guys, much love. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Remember. Build a company full of giants.